Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Awake in the World. We are live. It is 6 p.m. on the 24th day of September. 2021 is just flying by. Mind speak versus spirit right here on the Awake in the World group page. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, interesting day today. Um, yeah. <laughs> just one of those weird days again you know <laughs> it's it's been difficult for kelly because the last time she was in school uh you know she, she was literally still a kid and, and you know I, I had to explain to her in some detail that there was no teacher going to tell her what she had to do next that this was college and and uh you were going to have to you know, get on with it. <laughs> and this is very true in every aspect of our lives. You know, uh, if we sit around waiting for someone to tell us what to do, not only are we handing all our power over to them, in some cases we're forced to, in, in, and apparently the cat agrees. And I should have warned everyone that Sunshine is currently uh, pursuing um, a fly uh, around the house and you can see her in the background there and, and she gets very talkative when she's having a hard time catching something. It's almost like she's frustrated. So <laughs> we'll have to see how that goes. But as I was saying, you know, you know, um, not only do we hand over our power and yes, in some cases we have, we have to, but the, the, the biggest deal is, is that, you know, life is willing to come running towards us when we go striding towards life. If we sit still, life says, well, you, you can try and do that, but, but I'm moving this way. And, and you're going to get dragged along one way or the other. And you have to be willing to get up and get on your feet and stride with life. And when you do, life carries you right along with it. As soon as life sees your commitment it shows you its commitment that it has to you so with that let me express my love to each and every one of you you know what are we going to talk about tonight we're going to talk about really and and this is kind of important a lot of people struggle with this uh i and, and this is not eckhart tolle's fault in any sort of way because nothing that eckhart tolle has ever said in these books or his talks is anything new as a matter of fact it, it comes primarily out of his own experiences in the east particularly in japan and some of the same temples that i was fortunate enough to visit and study at so where the issue comes into is is ego which is our sense of i is you know we got to be perfectly clear about this it is not something you're out to kill and it's not something that you're out to destroy it is you in your sense of you it is you in your sense of you in that limited small sense of you, it is you. It's not something you're going to get rid of. But it's changeable, adaptable. It's really just a learned memory bank. Something that's become self-aware through the, the vast input of experience. And as I said many times, this occurs roughly these days because of the amount of input. It's getting lower and lower in age. These days, believe it or not, ego is starting to form quite heavily by the ages of eight or nine. And that's really scary. We're talking about a quantum leap forward from, you know, 11 to 12, 13 years old, no more than a decade ago. So this speaks to the amount of experience and, and that the mind doesn't differentiate between experience that is actually physical or, or artificial. And of course, thanks to screens, those experiences are, are being pre-programmed many years ahead of time with very little control anymore. The foundational experiences that a child needs to form a healthy ego don't exist in our modern world at all. As a matter of, and, and this isn't, you know, Garen talking out of his hat. 
There are uh, any number of anthro anthropological papers, uh, as well as uh, other papers on the subject, that the only society in existence on the planet that raises a balanced being is indeed the untouched hunter-gatherer um, First Nations that still exist on the planet, and, and those numbers are dwindling. What does this have to do with, with mind speak and spirit? It has a lot to do with it. And, and what that is, is that in, in the advent of, you know, the likes of Eckhart Tolle expounding the teachings of the East, ego will twist that too. You know, in, in the same way an ego can twist Christianity, can twist any other religious faith, can, can twist what you say in jest and make it somehow so wrong. Or, you, you know how ego works that way. We, we've all done it ourselves too. When we, when we choose to take it the worst possible way, why? To suit ourselves. And this is what ego tends to do in order to survive because it understands that it's not the thing that's actually running the show. And never was. And yet it really likes that degree of control. So we're not going to be trying to kill ego. That's not it. But as your consciousness raises, and what that really means, if, if we have to define raising consciousness as a concrete action, it is the understanding reconciliation of all your past experiences with your sense of self. In other words, you've forgiven, forgotten, grown, seen the lessons in your experiences, have ceased to judge those people who were involved, have ceased to hold on to the victim mentality, the idea that you've somehow been so wronged in your life, when you've let go of all of that is awakened consciousness. That's what it is. It's a process of coming to peace with every aspect of your past perceived and your present moment existence. A total acceptance and surrender to now. This does not mean you disappear. You know, and I can understand how, the, how that's easy to, 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 to misunderstand from such memes and other phrases, you know, only in the present moment. You know, the reason he, the ego doesn't like the present moment is it can't exist in it. It does exist in the present moment. The, the deal with a fully awakened uh, mind is that it has nothing to say now. It's in observation mode. It's here within the present moment. I'm going to use an example. You know, uh, Kelly and I decided some months ago, you know, we, we, we don't purchase anything off the wall. Uh, we, we don't have a lot of money to do so, for one. And for two, we believe in being careful with that sort of thing. So we decided about eight months ago that... This year at Christmas, we were going to get ourselves the Oculus Quest 2 virtual reality headset. And the purpose of that was to use it for um, an additional source of exercise throughout the fall and winter. You know, obviously the, the, the times that we can't get out to snowshoe or, or do whatever else we're going to do. And to incorporate it as, as an additional part of our exercise routine. And... One of the uh, programs on there is a program called Beat Saber. And, and you get fantastic music and, and you get these cubes flying at you that you have to cut with lightsabers in the right direction. And the cube tells you which direction you need to cut it at. And they're coming faster and faster and beat with the music. And boy, let me tell you, you do, do that for 20 minutes, even on easy mode, and you're sweating. It's a great workout. The trick with that, though, is that if you try to consciously think about what cube direction you're going to have to swing next, you, you get totally muddled up and you lose it. Your mind isn't fast enough. 
But once you've played one or two songs worth, five or six minutes to warm up, if you're consciously aware, you'll notice that all of a sudden, the ego just shuts the hell up. You're still there. But you're in tune with the, with the beat to the music. You're, you're no longer speaking the cube direction out because you can't keep up with it anyways. And you're simply observing these lightsabers flashing back and forth and cutting these cubes apart. And, and, and marveling at the dance that is being played out in front of you. And whenever the mind starts up again, boy, instantly you begin to lose touch and lose rhythm with what's happening. You begin to strike the cubes the wrong way. And it occurred to me playing that game how, how much the first time that, that I had so much mind chatter with it that, that I was the thing in the way of myself enjoying and playing the game fully. It's no different than our lives. That egoic sense of self is not something that, that you destroy or, or you know, e even me saying to everyone, well, putting it in the dog cage isn't really fair because it is your sense of you here. It is the memory bank of experience that you believe to be you while you're here on this planet. And even though you're so much more than that, and even though it's so important to pay attention to spirit, the larger aspect of you, the character you play here on this stage is worthy of review. You're going to get in that spiritual newspaper on the review of this round of planet Earth. The character you play is valuable. And that character came with a certain role and, 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 and changing roles and, and certain goals. And because it's a role, because it's a character in this play we would call life, there is a great value to that character's point of view and that character's evolving point of view. And that's what God, that's what the Creator wants from you. It experiences itself through you, your individual one-of-a-kind filter that you would call yourself, your sense of I. The evolvement of that sense of I, that awakening of that consciousness ever higher until it literally realizes that it's always been in contact with spirit, that it is actually part of spirit. In that, you don't lose yourself even though you lose yourself. Christ didn't lose himself. He was still Jesus Christ. And yet, he had transcended that as well. And both of those things sit side by side in a relative frame of reference like this physical world. They really do. So... How do we understand when it's being driven by ego? And again, just because it's being driven by ego is not a bad thing. It, it's just to let you know that, yes, this is coming from my sense of self. And that egoic sense of self is not to be trusted. <laughs> it really isn't most times. It takes a long time before it gets to that point. And, and here's why. So we, we know the telltale signs of our own egoic sense of self at work instead of our higher state of self. And that is one, fear. So if our inner voice is speaking things involving fear and, and things that create anxiety, I guarantee you it's coming from your egoic sense of self. Your intuition or the way your higher self speaks to you never comes from a place of fear. Fear solely belongs to something afraid that it may one day be diminished or die. And that is not what your spirit is. Another telltale sign that you're acting from ego is the concept of scarcity. Now, this is a tough one. You know, as, as someone who spent uh, literally years of my life homeless and, and with almost nothing, can't ever say that I ever thought that there was scarcity. 
I personally always felt abundant. And looking back on those experiences now, I, I, I can't say that I lived in a scarce world. The idea of scarcity is all about the insecurity of whether there'll be enough in the future. It's all about projecting into a place where there's not enough. And that mindset, not enough money, not enough time, not enough food, n n not enough women, not enough men, whatever it may be, that's ego. Intuition always speaks about abundance, about fulfillment, confidence in the process of life itself. Another thing uh, for ego is fluctuating ideas. You know, if you're struggling to come to a decision in your life and, and you're trying your best to listen to spirit and you notice that everything that's coming to your mind is, is fluctuating from well, this and then that and then back to this and then off to something else, that's your egoic sense of self sifting through trying to come up with its best, most protective solution. Intuition is a steady knowing. When our ego tries to boost ourselves up around others, when, when, it, when it tries to appease others, when it tries to make itself superior to others, and, and if it, in, our, in our experiences, if we're somehow feeling that that's supposed to be coming from a place of spirit, it never is. And if you've been here long enough, you've heard me say at least one, two, three, or ten times that that's one of the things I'm very clear about in these videos. I do not ever wish to be thought of as being somehow any more than you are. I am relaying to you my experience and my awakening today. You will take from it what you will, as is your will. I care not. Justification. One of the biggest problems with ego, and, and this is a thing that, that you know goes hand in hand with the idea of appeasing others and, 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 and having them approve of you, is the idea of needing to justify. Justifying is, is really ego just backing itself up. You know, there'll be a, a, a literal menu of items as to why the ego is making this choice. Spirit doesn't care about those things. Spirit doesn't need any justification or any reason to explain itself. Spirit simply knows. Judgment, comparison. These two go hand in hand, although they're so insidious, they're really worth about talking separately, okay? So, so judgment and the idea of comparison, because comparison is based on judgment, what they're really about is misunderstanding why you're here. You know, you're not here to judge the creator's creation. You're not here to judge anything at all, or for that matter, make any comparisons, because quite simply, there is nothing that can compare to you. There is no other apple on the tree. You are that one apple, as I am that one tiger, and Kelly is that one orange or peach. <laughs> the point being is your sense of self, your filter, your view of the world that the creator has manifested and you are part of is a one of a kind that's never been seen before and never will be seen again. It has a short, finite existence and then it's gone. The experience is always held, however. But there is no need for any comparison because indeed you cannot compare one with another. Each is unique.
you know, your soul doesn't do anything for praise or reward. It really doesn't. And, and this is a big sign when we really become in tune with ourselves. We begin to feel a sense of surety. And in that surety, that there's no need for people to say, well, we're right or we're wrong. It doesn't really matter anymore. We're listening to a voice that doesn't speak, but rather rises as a knowing within the silence that you've created by accepting the present moment as it is. By willing to, be, to, to, to understand fully that God has your back. That there's nothing you need to desire. There's nothing you need to worry for. That you live in a world of abundance. And that all the things involving your fulfillment and your sense of, of, of self will be delivered unto you should you step back and let it happen. We tend to believe that we know the right way all the time. God, was I the basket case on the poster for that? The poster child in the basket for that, whatever. <laughs> you know, even when, I, I and I still remember the days when I would hear the voice of my in, intuition quite clearly, and my mind would override it, and, and, and I would be... In the act of, of carrying out the nefarious plot of my ego, at the same time, I, I was saying to myself, this simply isn't going to go well. I, I already know. And, and I, I wasn't willing to accept it yet. And that's okay, too. We're, we're going to do that many times. But don't deny when something goes awry in your existence, according to your judgment or point of view, Take a close look at it. You'll see that you knew it. But you just didn't want to pay any attention. You just wanted to railroad right over it and go, go ahead and do it and try to get a different outcome. Our voice of spirit speaks from a place of abundance, from a place of love, from a place of acceptance, from a place of surrender, from a place of not caring who knows what it does for another in any sort of way. Understanding that what it does for another, it's actually doing for part of itself. That's it. That's all tonight. I'm not going to keep you any longer. Much love. Namaste. You know, learn to listen to that quiet sense within you, that gut feeling. And one of the ways we can accomplish this most easily is by be, be willing to accept this moment right now, just as it is, with no judgment. Feel the gift, feel the gratitude of being able to take a full breath in and out in this moment. That's it. Have a wonderful night. Good night.